Eleven year old Nur Jimmy is hooked on this Japanese manga series. It features the fictional adventures of a young Japanese girl living in Hiroshima in the 1930s, before the atomic bomb was dropped. The setting, the time of the story, and the characters couldn't be more removed from Noor's life. I really like this book because of the adventure and the drawings, and sometimes I see myself in the character. It's just fun. Finding mangas in West Africa, let alone Senegal, is almost impossible. Yet there's an increasing appetite from young readers for these stories. Last year, Mariam Sek, an avid reader of comics with an extensive collection, opened her house to the public. It's now a comic book and manga library. I put a message up on Facebook saying that people could come and borrow books. There was a sudden wave of inquiry and the interest in reading just continues to grow. They come after school, on weekends. Some even have them home delivered. There's plenty of Japanese mangas, Belgium and American comic books here. But there's one thing lacking. African stories made by Africans. Tired of telling the stories of other people's cultures, Malik Fejian moved back to Senegal after working in India's animation industry. Now with a small team, he's trying to make African manga animations. Here, they're working on the story of a young Senegalese girl. She's in trouble for hanging out with street musicians in her neighborhood. It turns out they're not so bad after all. The moral of the story? Don't judge a book by its cover. It is tradition for African to tell story. It's not like fairy tale, it is just how to be, how to behave in this particular society. Unlike Western comic heroes, manga characters are often shy and emotionally vulnerable, but they always rise to the occasion. The courage displayed in these timeless stories continues to feed children's imaginations, no matter where they're from. Nicholas Hawk, Al Jazeera, Dakar.